Ready? Ready? Okay, Mr. Murphy, my name is Gaynor Delano. I'm in the Guam Daily Post. And uh, you were in the news lately because of um, uh, what happened in a quarantine facility. Tell us in your own words um, what happened. Okay, well, basically, um, when the flight came in from Honolulu, um, it took about 30% of us, I think, in between 30 and 40%. There wasn't many people on the plane. There was probably a hundred. It's pretty uncrowded, as you can understand why, right? The height of COVID and everything, nobody really wanted to travel. So um, they took uh, a picture. As you're going down the hallway, they take a picture of you when you're right before you step foot into the terminal. And it's, it's a nice size camera, right? I guess it's for the record book. And, and then so I went down and I filled out all the uh, paperwork, like where were you? And I had come from San Francisco and Seattle and before that, Georgia, and even drove down to Florida. So unbeknownst to me, a day or two before I got here, Georgia was declared a hotspot. And so being so truthful that I was, of course, she said, oops, okay. You know, I'm like, hmm, okay. And she said, you have to go to quarantine. So downstairs we went and into the school buses and down to the Bayview Quarantine Hotel. And uh, that was on the 10th, July 10th, 7, 10, 20. Okay, and then what happened? Um, and then we got issued the room and we, we go up to the rooms and all of that stuff. And then at five o'clock in the morning, and I, I wrote this letter to uh, the Guam Army National Guard, Department of Public Health, Social Services employee, Nicole, Laura, and the staff and the government of Guam. And um, you have a copy of what the letter says. It basically is, You'll have to read it yourself. Yeah. It's a pretty lengthy letter. It's pretty self-explanatory. So, what's the the gist of it? Just um, for our the gist of the letter was that um, I was deemed an essential employee. Therefore, I should be COVID tested. Uh, you know, cut kind of prioritized, and I, I had I've been doing work for the government of Guam at the. Uh, Aganya Sewage Treatment Plant, the Guam Water Works Authority, and at the Guam Port Authority. So I got a letter from Rory Respicio saying, hey, Matthew is an essential worker. You're also in receipt of that letter. I got this letter from Rory July 10th. Uh, I, oh, I guess I came in on the 9th. So I got the letter on the 10th of July. Got it pretty quick. Rory got it to me right around 5 p.m. So uh, I shot that off to Nicole Marcilla and Laurel, uh, who are with DPHSS, and I also CC'd Anna Perez. She's with the Guam DOE. She's one of those uh, transplants from DOE that uh, kind of helps with the human relations of people that are stuck in a quarantine. And um, so once this letter went out and said, how, uh, they didn't, it fell on deaf ears for three or four days, just complete and utter silence. And at some point you asked to be tested. Yes. Um, uh, this, uh, on, at 5 a.m. on 7-11, July 11th, this letter went out, I asked to be tested at 5 a.m. in the morning. And it's all self-explanatory in the letter. And what's interesting, is the guy next door to me was also an essential worker for uh, Mitchell Graham, employee with uh, uh, Albert Smith, Smith Bridge. And the nurses came to his door at 4.30 in the afternoon. And, you know, when you hear the knock on the doors at the Bayview, you think it's your door or you hope it's your door. Wow, oh, somebody's coming to see me. You know, or maybe they're going to test me. But much to my chagrin, I looked outside and Mitchell Graham was getting tested. And we chat on the balconies. 
afterwards. And he said, yeah, should be out of here. They said, I should have the results tomorrow. I'm like, well, who were they? He said, there were some nurses from off property, you know, uh, that his boss set out there, right? Mm -hmm. So I kept thinking, you know, and then they're, they're telling me that, oh, no, nurses can't come from outside. And anyway, I couldn't get a straight answer. In fact, I, I was totally ignored in all my email chains that I sent out to these people. So what had happened um, on this day here, which was 714, okay, July 14th, I uh, went down, I wake up early, like 4.30 in the morning, I went downstairs and I, I said, I'm gonna walk over to my brother's house and go get a COVID test at GRMC. And they said, yeah, you can come in, you can go to the drive-through, and then my brother's gonna drop me back off and I'm gonna wait for the results. And they said, no, you can't leave property. So since I was being ignored and my projects are running awry without my presence, I had an anxiety attack. So at about 5.30 in the morning, I called downstairs and asked for a nurse. I said, man, I'm really not feeling good at all. They said, okay, we'll, be right, we'll, we'll have the nurses call you right away. So about 45, 50 minutes go by and my anxiety is just building and building into a sort of a panic attack. And I've had them before. Uh, I've been prone to anxiety, I'm just a high strung guy. And um, blood pressure was real high too. So I was feeling kind of dizzy. So I called an ambulance and the ambulance came right around 6 a.m. And um, took my blood pressure right in the hallway outside my room and said, yeah, your blood pressure's through the roof. And I had run out of blood pressure medicine. I was gone for a couple months visiting my daughter. And I only get it one month supply at a time. Now my prescription was back here. And I was on vacation, so I wasn't really that stressed out until I got back. And um, when I went to GMH, they took the COVID test immediately. The minute I stepped out, of the ambulance, I sat in a chair in the carport before they let me go in, and they had the results within two minutes. Nurse Leon Guerrero, coincidentally. Nice, real nice lady. Very, very experienced lady. And um, she told me, you're negative, within two minutes. Step inside. And I knew I was negative. I had no symptoms. I practiced social distancing all I was gone. I didn't come in contact with anybody who had it, part of what's in that letter. I mean, you know, but you never know with this dumb COVID thing. And um, I got my prescription to the medicine. Okay. Uh, and lidopine, Besolate, take one tablet a day. That was for, for the uh, anxiety and the Avitan, which is the blood thinner for the high blood pressure. And then right here, the doctor's orders, and he underlined this, said anxiety and stress reactions. It said treatment. Generally, this order will, you know, resolve itself with time. However, occasionally it can progress into a more severe disorder. Medicine may be needed to treat this. If the, uh, if the provider today gave you medication, please follow the instructions. Counseling can be helpful, blah, 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 to say. Potential ways to reduce stress and anxiety include spend time with family and friends, get regular physical exercise such as walking, avoid alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, and chocolate, aromatherapy, try relaxation, yoga, so forth, eat healthy, uh, make time for yourself and your hobbies and interests. And all this stuff you can't do. You can't exercise, you, you can't go do yoga, you can't uh, eat healthy. The food is absolutely horrible, So, but I had food delivered. You know, and I, I couldn't really sleep well. And I said, get enough rest and sleep. So after getting this, I said, okay, uh, I'm negative, And it's saying that I need to spend time with family and friends, so I'm gonna go self-quarantine. So that's what I did. I, and no police were there. Nobody told me anything that I had to go back to quarantine. No one called me, 
names written all over my truck. In fact, my truck was still parked in front of the hotel at that point in time. I was afraid to go back and get it at that time. I was just so stressed out. So I just went and checked into the Hilton. And then the Hilton Hotel asked me, have you been traveling? I said, yeah, I just got back from the States a few days ago. And, but I did just have a negative test from GMH. They said, can you get a copy? So I went out and got a copy. Showed him the copy and checked into the hotel. Uh, there's the negative COVID test from uh, 714, okay? Which July 14th at 6 a.m. 6 or 7 a.m. It doesn't really say here, but it was really early in the morning. So that was negative. Negative for SARS and COVID-19. It's an Abbott Labs test. The big company at the labs. Then that wasn't good enough for me. So four days later, on the 18th, which was a Saturday, I remember. First COVID test, July 14th from GMH, negative. And it's on public health, even social services, letterhead even, that I'm negative. So after I, I got the, this negative test and the doctor's instructions, what I need to do, I scanned this and emailed it to the police chief and the police chief's secretary. And I, I forgot her name, she was really nice, and she called me back, she said, Matthew, just relax, I have sent that to all the precincts on island. So they've got it. the two mom, the agate, of course it went to a gang at first where I stand. So she was really nice about it. So I thought it was okay. So, but four days later, my friend said, you know what, why don't you go have another test? So on Saturday on the 14th, on the 18th, July 18th at 2.15 p.m., I went and uh, Dr. Nguyen at American Medical in Manila, good guy, uh, took the nasopharyngeal uh, COVID, SARS dash COVID two test negative. So I had one on the fourteenth. I had another one on the eighteenth. So then on the twentieth, on Monday, I went back. I went back to the Bayview Hotel to get my laptop. Um, I'm trying to get the date right here. Let's see. Uh, 20th of July, I went back, which was a Monday. I am correct. And I spoke with them over the phone. I said, need to get my laptop and my vitamins and my clothes. And they're in the room. And I'm going to send Luke over to get them. Because I wasn't really trusting the situation. I was afraid I'd get locked up again. So... They said, no, only you can come and get it, but, but just, just come and get your stuff. Everything's chill. Everything's kind of cool. And uh, they didn't say kind of cool. They just said, come and get your stuff. So when I got there, of course, the cops were always there. Um, they, they said, you're going to have to check yourself back in. But before you do, we are going to arrest you and take fingerprints and pictures. So they handcuffed me and took me downtown. That was like at 10 in the morning when I got there. And that only took about an hour. It was really an uncomfortable situation. And so they brought me back, handcuffed me again, and then brought me back. And then the guy was there waiting. His name's Chima. He's, I guess he's one of the top guys from the Department of Public Health and Social Services. And he, he, he saw me getting out of the cop car handcuffed. It was actually an enclosed like paddy wagon. It looked like a dog catcher truck. So they shoved me in the back of that thing. And the whole time when I went back, I showed them both negative COVID tests to the police, to DPHSS employees. Shiva was there when I went back too. And he watched me get handcuffed. And then he was there when I came back after the one hour booking stuff in the Ganya. 
And I, I was clutching this because I kept it in my glove. I didn't let it out of my dear hand for fears that I was going to say, hey, where's your, where's your papers? Okay, so I, I showed her two negative COVID tests, one on the 14th and one on the 18th. And they said, that's not good enough. Not good enough. Because you left when you had that anxiety attack and stuff and you weren't supposed to leave. It says you are not allowed to leave this premises. I said, well, I was having a panic attack. I had to take care of myself at this point. You know, I mean, it, it, it comes down to this. You know, if I'm in charge of my own health and what I put into my body and how I treat myself and, and all that kind of stuff. And if, if I do anything to harm myself, that's on me. But if you're doing something to me that harms my health, then that's on you. So I did not want to be near these people. I was so angry. And then when all that happened and I got back out of the paddy wagon, dog catcher mobile, the guy, Chima, I don't know his last name. He, uh, Indian guy, Indian immigrant guy, nice guy, gregarious guy. But he, he said, it doesn't matter that you had two negative COVID tests. We have to do our own test. So you have to go back upstairs and go into the same room that you came out of. So up I went. And so I said, here's my two tests. I really don't want to have another test. I don't like that swab going up into my medulla oblongata. It, it gives me a headache, just the thought of it. And he goes, well, then you're going to be stuck here. And I said, wow, really? Okay. All right. So, so now what? And, and then the guy, he just stood there and stood there. He goes, please let me take the test. Let me take the test. And I said, what is it, three, four, five days a week till the results come in? What, what's that all about? And he goes, it should come right away. I said, well, we, okay, they, you guys have been telling me right away ever since I got here. Someone's going to call me back right away. We're going to get a nurse for you right away. And, and just nothing but deafening silence. That's the most frustrating thing about being in there. They, they just tell, tell you what you want to hear and then they just, they can't do anything because they, I, can't, I don't think they can get straight answers from up above the higher ups. But I said, if you can guarantee me, he, he says, I'll tell you what, I'll guarantee you, I, I'll bring you the test results tomorrow. I said, okay, test me right now, Chima, test me right now. So I sat in the chair and the guy came in the room and there it is, my third test. So my third test came out negative. The test was taken on the 23rd. Uh, SARS COVID-2 negative. Date of report, July 20th. So I had one on July 14th that came up negative at Guam Memorial Hospital. I had one taken on Saturday, July 18th that came up negative at American Medical Center by Dr. Nguyen. And then I had the third test taken by Shima in the Department of Public Health and Social Services that's also negative. So now I've got three negative tests. The knock came on the door about two o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday. And uh, they gave me the negative COVID test and the completion of quarantine clearance form that says, to whom it may concern, Matthew Murphy has completed a period of quarantine as recommended by the Public Health and Social Services for persons suspected of COVID-19. What's the date on it? The date on this is the 23rd, 23rd okay. July 23rd. And you were still at attached the, is a fact sheet of the COVID-19. And you were still at the quarantine hotel at that point? Yeah, they brought this to my room okay. and they said, you can check out now because it's my completion okay. of quarantine letter. Okay. But they wouldn't accept the one from American Medical Doctor, done by Dr. Nguyen in the private mm -hmm. sector and they wouldn't except the one when I had the panic attack and was admitted to GMH, which to me made no sense. But anyway, so I went through the motions and uh, that's it. And then you were charged. When did you know that there was a misdemeanor charge filed against you? Oh, here's, here's what's interesting. They, 
they wrote me a ticket when they booked me and confined me and they, they also run your fingerprints nationwide in a database to make sure you don't have any warrants or you're not a weirdo. And, and they made me wait an extra 10 minutes for that. So hold on, we're doing the nationwide, worldwide database, you know, it's all, all online. And they said, you're good to go, Matt, clean. You know, and, he, and then the guy, the police chief was there too, or the assistant, he said, you've never been arrested on Guam for anything. I, I don't, there's never been a record of you. I said, yeah, I'm pretty good about paying laws. Uh, so they wrote me the ticket and it said I have to appear 366 days from the date of the ticket. So I have, I have to go July uh, 25th, 2021 to court. It's 366 days after they write the ticket. What, do you have a copy of the ticket? Yeah, I, I do, I can scan it and send it to you. Yeah, I have it. Oh wait, I have it in the car. You want it? I go down and get it. You can walk me down, okay. I have a copy of the ticket. Here's, here's where the real frustration came in. The, I was interviewed extensively by Officer Benavente, a woman at the precinct. She's the one that had the uh, pleasure of handcuffing me. And uh, she said, you can choose to talk to us or you can just, just be quiet and not say a word. And I kind of felt like being quiet, not saying a word, but then I just, I said, ah, all right, I'll talk. I got nothing to hide. So I explained all of what I just told you to her. And she just kind of went, hmm, hmm. Then when I read the newspaper that they said they were going to follow through with the charges, nowhere in there, when it talked about the police report, did it ever mention that Matthew had in his possession two negative COVID tests, or that Matthew had been picked up by an ambulance and had the anxiety attack. And then leaving Camacho had, probably doesn't even know any of this. And if he did, and he still had the audacity to go in there and say, hey, we're gonna pursue charges, then this is just all a big political, I'm just a big, I'm a political football. And I don't want to be that. I'm a law-abiding, tax-paying citizen. <laughs> and What's I love Guam, and I love the Guam people. And I wouldn't dare go around this island spreading COVID. What's your message? You can talk to Leave and Camacho directly. What do you want to say to the Attorney General? I, I just like to say, hey, I, I'd like you to know the facts. And, and I'd like to, I'd like you to just drop the case because it's really bad for my reputation. I'm a small businessman, I'm self-employed, employ about a dozen people, do a lot of construction contracts, a lot of gov bomb contracts. This might cost me a lot of business. Because people don't like uh, people who disobey laws. Nobody does. And I'm not a person that disobeys laws. I have no criminal record here, never have. And I just want, I'd like this to be on the record because of all a social media out there. My son's saying, God, Dad, I'm hearing good things, I'm hearing bad things. A lot of my friends are saying, oh, you're a hero and all that stuff. I said, I don't really care about all that. I just want people to know what actually happened. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And um, hopefully you get uh, the final resolution sooner than 366 yeah. days. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Oh, you're welcome, Delano, right? Gamer. Delano. Gamer. I remember seeing your yes, name. Yes, sir.